aerosol spray is a type of dispensing system which creates an aerosol mist of liquid particles. This is used with a canor bottle that contains a payload and propellant under pressure. When the container's valve is opened, the payload is forced out of a small hole and emerges as an aerosol or mist. As propellant expands to drive out the payload, only some propellant evaporates inside the can to maintain a constant pressure. Outside the can, the droplets of propellant evaporate rapidly, leaving the payload suspended as very fine particles or droplets. Typical payload liquids dispensed in this way are insecticides, deodorants and paints. An atomizer is a similar device that is pressurized by a hand-operated pump rather than by stored propellant. History The concepts of aerosol probably go as far back as 1790. The first aerosol spray can patent was granted in Oslo in 1927 to Eric Roth AI, a Norwegian chemical engineer, and a United States patent was granted for the invention in 1931. The patent rights were sold to a United States company for 100,000 Norwegian kroner. The Norwegian Postal Service, Post and Norge, celebrated the invention by issuing a stamp in 1998. In 1939, American Julian S. Kahn received a patent for a disposable spray can, but the product remained largely undeveloped. Kahn's idea was to mix cream and a propellant from two sources to make whipped cream at home, not a true aerosol in that sense. Moreover, in 1949, he disclaimed his first four claims, which were the foundation of his following patent claims. It was not until 1941 that the aerosol spray can was first put to good use by Americans Lyle Goodhue and William Sullivan, who are credited as the inventors of the modern spray can. Their design of a refillable spray can dubbed the Bug Bomb, is the ancestor of many popular commercial spray products. Pressurized by liquefied gas, which gave it propellant qualities, the small, portable can enabled soldiers to defend against malaria carrying mosquitoes by spraying inside tents and airplanes in the Pacific during World War II. Goodhue and Sullivan received the first Eric Roth AI gold medal from the Federation of European Aerosol Associations on August 28, 1970 in Oslo, Norway in recognition of their early patents and subsequent pioneering work with aerosols. In 1948, three companies were granted licenses by the United States government to manufacture aerosols. Two of the three companies. Chase Products Company and Claire Manufacturing, still manufacture aerosols to this day. The crimpon valve, used to control the spray in low-pressure aerosols was developed in 1949 by Bronx machine shop proprietor Robert A. Chaplin Alp. In 1974, DRS. Frank Sherwood Rowland and Mario J. Molina proposed that chlorofluorocarbons used as propellants in aerosol sprays, contributed to the depletion of Earth's ozone layer. In response to this theory, the U.S. Congress passed amendments to the Clean Air Act in 1977 authorizing the Environmental Protection Agency to regulate the presence of CFCs in the atmosphere. The United Nations Environment Program called for ozone layer research that same year, and, in 1981, authorized a Global Framework Convention on Ozone Layer Protection. In 1985, Joe Farman, Brian G. Gardner, and John Shanklin published the first scientific paper detailing the hole in the ozone layer. That same year, the Vienna Convention was signed in response to the UN's authorization. Two years later, the Montreal Protocol which regulated the production of CFCs was formally signed. It came into effect in 1989. The U.S. formally phased out CFCs in 1995. Aerosol propellants If aerosol cans were simply filled with compressed gas, it would either need to be at a dangerously high pressure and require special pressure vessel design 
like in gas cylinders, or the amount of payload in the can would be small, and rapidly deplete. Usually the gas is the vapor of a liquid with boiling point slightly lower than room temperature. This means that inside the pressurized can, the vapor can exist in equilibrium with its bulk liquid at a pressure that is higher than atmospheric pressure, and able to expel the payload, but not dangerously high. As gas escapes, it is immediately replaced by evaporating liquid. Since the propellant exists in liquid form in the can, it should be miscible with the payload or dissolved in the payload. In gas dusters, the propellant itself acts as the payload. The propellant in a gas duster can is not compressed air as sometimes assumed, but usually a hollow can. Chlorofluorocarbons (CFCs) were once often used as propellants, but since the Montreal Protocol came into force in 1989, they have been replaced in nearly every country due to the negative effects CFCs have on Earth's ozone layer. The most common replacements are mixtures of volatile hydrocarbons, typically propane, N-butane and isobutane. Dimethyl ether, DME, and methyl ethyl ether are also used. All these have the disadvantage of being flammable. Nitrous oxide and carbon dioxide are also used as propellants to deliver foodstuffs, for example, whipped cream and cooking spray. Medicinal aerosols such as asthma inhalers use hydrofluorocarbons, HFA, either HFA-134A or HFA-227 or combinations of the two. Manual pump sprays can be used as an alternative to a stored propellant. The above situation may change as new technology emerges. A new patented family of aerosol valves has been developed by the Spray Research Group at Salford University, UK, and these valves generate a bubbly flow within aerosol cans, using compressed air or inert gas. This technology is now being brought to market by the Salford Valve Company, Salvalco. Packaging Today and Packaging Europe News March 6, 2015, another UK company, 42 Technology, has developed a patented technology to generate more finely dispersed mists by using a disc of superhydrophobic material within the manual pump.